Okay. <laughs> so I'm just going to, I'm not going to stream it on Facebook yet, but I'm just setting. Is it all just audio? <clears throat> yeah. Okay. When you said live on Facebook, I was like, oh, maybe there's a video portion. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no. I'm. Okay. Hold on. Do... Can we just talk again? I feel like there might be an echo. Yeah, absolutely. I can talk all day, honey. <laughs> <laughs> no, that sounds okay. All right. I put Melissa creativity and the process. I'm just going to leave it as that for now. And then what I do is afterwards, like I can change all the, like put your information in that sort of thing. And then I have a YouTube channel as well. So I'll also put your information in the, on that too. Cool. Yeah. And then same thing you can add in the comments or However, you where know. can people hear this? Because my mom's like, oh, I'd like to listen. Where can I log in? I was like, I <laughs> well, <laughs> it's I'm just streaming it on my Facebook page. Um, oh, but, okay, okay. but then what you can do is you can um, like we'll take a minute once we go live, like I'll um, I'll share it onto my business page. So people that are on there can see it, too. And then okay. if you share it on your page as well. So you'll just when you go on. If you go onto your phone, you'll see that I'm live. You just press share and like on your page. And then okay. any, anyone that's on under your friends will be able to see that you're live too. Okay. <laughs> and then that's I'm so not a techie. Okay. That's, that's okay. It doesn't matter. We can even talk about that too, about like creative people and how technology doesn't always work for us. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, my throat's like, Ugh. <laughs> mm -hmm. it adds character all right so i'm just gonna press go live now if you're cool with that but if do you have any questions first of all not really i if you're gonna go through it when you're going live and explain like <laughs> yeah i'm not i'm not quite into like editing yet either so i'm pretty just raw the way it is so oh i'm fine with that i will <laughs> really try hard not to swear <laughs> no I was actually just gonna say and you can swear if you want to it doesn't matter um, uh, it depends on the topic usually I'm pretty good when it comes to art <laughs> yeah f-bombs are fine it doesn't matter that's the whole point we're just talking and it's more art, like just like a little coffee coffee chat that type of thing <clears throat> oh, and we don't even really know each other so it's really I know just really I know. getting getting to know each other awesome giver yeah okay and if i sound like i'm a frog then that's okay too all right so okay, i'll build your lily pad <laughs> so what we'll do is we'll just take a minute to share it out and it's saying that we are live Woohoo! so you should be able to see that under your facebook or under my Facebook. And then anybody else that wants to do this as well, that's on my Facebook that wants to share it out on theirs, they can as well, just to support us a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Sharing now. And then we'll introduce ourselves and I'll actually start. Um, but this is a new podcast for me as well. And I just kind of handpicked people that I thought were cool. Oh yeah, <laughs> and it's funny when I did the advertisement. It was like Melissa, a creative artist, an awesome person, <laughs> which is funny because I was saying we I we don't really even know each other, so this is really just a chat. I think to just discuss different um, kind of different topics. Even though I chose creativity, I feel like there's a lot more to you than just like your creative art. I feel like yeah, oh yeah, there's a there's a process, <laughs> but there's like way more to it. There's spirituality there's like body mind spirit there's um like health and um money and abundance and it just feels like i, I could go on I, i'm just picking I'm going up. through <laughs> all those and check marking as you talk <laughs> yeah and it's weird because i have three blue um i have a pen a, like a marker and like a fine tip marker thing in my right hand and um i don't know why but they're all blues and i was saying i have like some throat stuff happening 
right now uh -huh. as well so uh -huh. um, and I love you saying we're going to do a healing session here <laughs> possibly um but I what I do what I do in this is at some point in the podcast I will do some theta healing downloads as well so for cool. people that don't know what theta healing is it's basically all you have to do is say yes to it and it's really I'm doing all the work but it's kind of like a little channeling thing that I do where I go into your um energy or like any conversation that came up, anything I feel like has like a little funky energy to it. Um, and what I mean by that is you can do muscle testing where you say something, but it might not really feel good or it might not feel like true, I guess. It's yep. like, I'm saying this, but I don't really believe it. Stuff like that. Um, that just means that we might have some like wishy-washy energy around our beliefs. And so theta healing is basically uh, really tweaking our limited beliefs where we we're still figuring ourselves out. Right. But we come into the world with all of these um, thoughts and emotions and then and then you add circumstances. So basically I do a download where I help you release the energy that's no longer serving you. And it could come from genetics, your ancestors, like just things, social norms, like things that we believe as a whole as well, like stuff we just picked up along the way that somebody said. And then what I do is I replace that energy by asking for that to be replaced for something positive to come in for you. And by, awesome. yeah, by setting the intention, really everything's intention, right? When we communicate with the universe, we're just saying, hey, this is what I want. We're putting in what we desire, but we have to all be on board with that. And again, if we're not sure if we want something, then that can create a lot of um, confusion yeah, and <laughs> defensive mechanisms. And yeah, if, if I, it, yeah. I always say when you place your order to, your, <clears throat> to the universe, be specific. <laughs> mm -hmm because you're going to get it. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. So that's kind of like just a little touch of what theta healing is, but just so people know when I'm like, would you like to release this? And absolutely. Have, well, have I'm this? quite familiar with it actually, but I'm okay. like, in case your listeners don't. <laughs> okay. And honestly, even though I've been um, doing it for quite a while um, and helping a lot of people, I'm still kind of figuring out how it works because it amazes me how, um, how powerful it is, but still like, there's it's still kind of confusing I find to understand how it really is even working but yeah it, but going into the creative process I guess we just trust that we're sent what we're sent so um I'm Robin <laughs> and my I'm last Alyssa. name <laughs> and my last name's Jardine I'm soon to be horseman actually in like a month <clears throat> so oh, I'm guys. thank you so that'll be interesting a name change um <laughs> So uh, I started this podcast mainly to support people, educate people, and create a little bit more of a community where like healers can help other healers out. It just expands by people sharing and um, getting more messages out. And so my goal is that we can inspire someone, at least one person along the way where they can make a difference in their own life or in somebody else's life. So it's pretty open in terms of what we can talk about. I already said you can swear as much as you want to. Um, <laughs> my, my background when it comes to the creative process is um, I'm very creative. I love being creative. Um, I'm also an artist and it's something I really feel like I'm just starting to tap into. Um, mm -hmm. And I feel like listening to kind of this chat I already know like me holding these markers and stuff I'm like I need to draw it's a sign <laughs> I need to draw I need to paint I need to color things like that so absolutely um, and it's funny when you say I'm an artist because everybody's an artist and honestly I didn't even feel comfortable with that title until maybe a year or two ago oh, cool. although I've been creative my whole life in one form or another and I've had this artistic business for actually five years now and I had a previous artistic artistic business doing face and body art like before that like with face painting and body painting and I, I was never comfortable with the title because I was never educated by like a formal you know mm -hmm. formation I, I I'm 100% self-taught so cool. it, it's funny how a word can be programmed or you know how a word can have meaning because everybody's an artist it's just a question of finding your source yep uh, 
I mean, even Cook's are an artist. Those things are pretty and tasty. You know what I mean? Like it yeah. could be music, it'd be poetry, whatever. Everybody's an artist inside. It just depends like what creative outlet you reaches out to you and for me <laughs> I don't know if it's because I'm a Gemini or what it keeps switching <laughs> and I'm okay with that like it's why I called my business in fluid of art because it, it's gonna flow I'm not necessarily gonna do the same thing all the time and I know myself well enough to know this <laughs> if I get bored it's like all right what's next I like to learn I like to play and and it's awesome that you grab those markers it means you're on to something like just let it flow I think a lot of people are mostly scared to fail and the problem is there's no such thing as failing <laughs> you know it's it's all subjective what is and, and I mean I technically fail all the time too it's just go with the flow work with what you've got and just let it come out that's the biggest challenge is to allow it to come out <laughs> yeah and instead of talking about it just just do it kind of thing exactly. yeah and that's grab whatever you've got and just give her yeah and when we're children we seem to want to draw on everything walls and people and things like that everything we're drawing in the sand when we're at the beach we're you know yeah. anything like everything is technically creativity it's mm -hmm. just you gotta you gotta let it flow and, and you refer to children I don't think I ever gave up being a kid <laughs> in many ways. People keep saying, you're that old. You don't look it because I don't feel it and I don't act it. Like it's all about letting yourself play. And I think on the artistic side, because I've always permitted myself to play and fail and just let it do whatever, just, just give her, you know, yeah. it, it kept me young at heart because I have that playfulness still that, that need to just make a mess. <laughs> and just go with it yeah um I I want you to introduce yourself because I want people to know what you do and how you do it because I want to know too <laughs> <laughs> oh, the how might be a little too long for your podcast but we can go yes. through a little bit of it you just take your time did you get a chance to share it out yes okay awesome uh, yeah cool. no my name is Melissa last name is Legrelli um and currently I have a business called Influitive Art so I know it's a little bit of a mouthful, <laughs> not intuitive, influitive. And um, that business is something that I have to create art, jewelry, and homewares. In other words, I'm still a little bit all over the place, but I'm very comfortable there. And uh, <laughs> it You're matches funny. my personality. Uh, I'm, I'm very sporadic. And uh, if ever I go off track, bring me back in. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, that, that's what I do. And I've, I've been doing that for like five years. And uh, I do have a big creative background of all sorts. But when I found something I could do from home on my own time, um, and th the fact that I can incorporate nature, crystals and gemstones and art all together, it's my niche. It's all my favorite things put into one. It's it's my baby so that's where I, I've been for the last five years and that's where I hope to keep flowing for uh well, I have no plan <laughs> <laughs> that's even better that's, I love that so you're I don't like, even want to think about it I'm just gonna go <laughs> so you're really free-spirited oh yeah I always have been I grew up in an environment where I'm very lucky that my mother had a huge influence on me she was an at-home mom and she was someone who totally allowed me to be me in every aspect and that aspect is a little complex to say the least but she always just allowed me to be and I always carried that over with me as an adult um I did have a nine years in my life where I was in a not so healthy relationship where a lot of that was shuffled down trying to fit in a box that I wasn't really fitting into mm -hmm. um but ever since then where I took my own shape again <laughs> which I'm not going to try to define because it's kind of impossible mm -hmm. but since I've kind of refound myself it's it's been bigger and better and and I've been able to just be me so yes I absolutely go with the flow um yeah <laughs> and so and so um, I'm just curious because I want to talk about the process of creativity, like yeah. because I, I was using the word channeling and that's kind of like a weird word because channeling can mean lots of different things to lots of different 
people. Um, and some people don't like to use that word. Um, but for some reason, that's what I'm, that's what I feel like I'm doing. And I kind of feel like you're doing that exact same thing. You're just channeling from spirit, like what you're meant to essentially just create. Um, yeah. obviously I use the words guides and flow, but essentially, yeah, it comes to the same idea. Yeah. Yeah. And it feels like you do that probably for yourself first, and then it just happens to help other people. Would you say that? Absolutely. My whole life theme is go with the flow. <laughs> Everything happens for a reason, even if you'll figure it out much later, uh, trust the process, you know, and that's for life and for what I create. Mm, I love that. So when you say trust the process, what is the process for you? Do you go in like stages where you're like, okay, I have like a creative room and I'm stepping into this place and nobody can bother me or. Absolutely. That's exactly what it feels like. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I and have, that... I have my studio, which is my little sacred zone. Um, and, and when I go in there, my whole family knows like I have two kids and a honey and a dog she's not in there at all because of the resin in the hair <laughs> but um my family knows like you knock first and if I don't answer you do not come in this is my time my space and a lot of times I work with toxic products too so you just don't come in if I don't tell you to come in <laughs> for many reasons but yeah as soon as I walk in there I've got my you know playlist on my 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 tablet and I play that and Often I have a plan of things I need to do for orders or for things I want to create. Right. But as a lot of times, especially winter time, mm -hmm. that's when I just sit and say, okay, what do I feel like doing today? What colors are attracting me? What mediums are calling my name? What would be more fun? Because the more fun you have, I find the more amazing your end product will be because you're raising your vibrations right you fall into like fun to me is in the love category you know how you have like love and fear like fun to me is in the love category it raises your vibration so the more fun I have the more I hear myself giddy sometimes literally like giggling like a child because <laughs> I'm having so much fun and that's my best stuff like is when you're playing and and just just going with it you know yeah and so do you teach people how um no because okay. I'm I, just gonna no <laughs> that's funny because I'm, I'm just like oh my god I want to learn what you like how to use resin <laughs> yeah and for, I, I don't teach for a lot of reasons uh the main one being most of the products I work with if you don't know how to use them properly are very toxic I don't want that responsibility or to be responsible for anybody getting hurt. Right. Um, right. Like when I work, I've got a big circulation fan. I've got a big mask on, which also makes it really hard to talk. Um, and if I want to really create like we're talking about right now and flow, I can't be distracted. <laughs> yeah. It's like I could teach the basics. I often take videos um, so people can see what I do but as far as talking people through them and step by step like as much as I've had teaching moments in my life I find that the creative process it's it's kind of my thing and it's not something like if people have questions I'll answer them but bringing people into my space I'm not comfortable with that like it, it is really a sacred space I will bring the occasional client and I'll cleanse and protect my space before that happens but I have a lot of crystals and gemstones that I work with and the, the energy in my space is programmed for where I want it to be. It's programmed to help me create what I need to create and in what vibration I need to be to do that. So it's not something that I'm willing to necessarily share. Mm -hmm. I, I don't mean to sound selfish, but you know what? I am. <laughs> You're That's funny. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> what I'm hearing from you is like, that you are holding space for yourself and like that you are committed to feeling good and creating like good for others Absolutely. so in order for them to get the best of you you have to be alone and Pretty fo much. and focused <laughs> and enjoying and enjoying your time so would you say you're an introvert um i'm partially introvert I love hanging out with the right people 
<laughs> um, but I'm, I'm very selective with who I spend my time and my energy. And if I go to a market, I love connecting with clients, but I'm exhausted at the end of it. I need a nap. Like it, it, I, I am definitely an introvert for the most part. Yeah. And an, I, and an, and an intuitive probably, and also an empath. Yeah. And that's the other thing. Like people have asked me, can you put ashes and stuff? Technically, yes. Do I want to? And am I going to? No, because I feel <laughs> everything and it's way too intense for me. I did it once for a friend, for a dog, and I bawled the whole time. Like I'm, I'm just not <laughs> emotionally capable of picking all that up. And I don't want to block it off. Like it's beautiful, but it's not something I want to do on the regular. No, thanks. <laughs> and you do really big pieces, don't you? I do. The biggest I've done so far is 30 by 40 inches, but I did buy bigger panels that I'm planning to do soon. Soon is, you know, ish. Uh, I, that, I really like your big stuff, like seeing it on a wall, because I actually I do do Maven, Maven Hill um, Farm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, she had a really nice piece of yours at her place where they do retreats. And I was like, yes. oh my God, that is so nice. And I'm like, when I'm more successful, I'm going to like own more of her big pieces. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And big pieces it's is beautiful. not something I do often um, for a few reasons. One, I need the space available because a lot of times if I'm working on little pieces, they still hog my table. Right. Um, but it, it, they're, they're more of a price point that not everybody can afford and they take up a lot of space. Mm -hmm. until like if it's a commission I get really nervous on commissions by the way I prefer not to do them but I mean you gotta do what you gotta do mm -hmm. but usually I just create them because I'm feeling called to create them which is the right. best ones but until they sell I gotta have a place to put it and I live in a fairly small home and there's like not a whole lot of storage which is why I'm I'm, I'm creating a solution right now literally as we speak um, I'm creating a little mobile boutique so that'll give me a lot more storage space but uh, yeah, I love creating the big pieces. That's when you'll see me giggling. <laughs> yeah. They're super fun. They're also super challenging, um, depending what I work with. If it's resin, I have a certain work time to work with. So the bigger it is, the more challenging that is to accomplish in the work time for the actual resin itself. Mm -hmm. um but also you got to do really proper planning to avoid waste and things like that like it's challenging from a to z um not to mention the space so i tend not to do them as much only because i don't have the space for them to one to create them and two to store them but i love them <laughs> i'll always have at least one or two you know what i mean yeah and do you tune into people you said you're really sensitive so like say i wanted a piece for like my new host that i'm building just say because <laughs> i kind of do <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah do you like do you tune into the energy of like my heart or you know how i you probably know pamela kale right yeah yeah she kind of does like the heart soul portraits and things do you find that you connect to the person who is purchasing the piece yes and no and that's a part where I have a hard time with commissions because I become my own critic mm -hmm. uh, I get really nervous that they're not going to like it especially if it's a bigger piece because whether you like it or not you're investing a lot of money to create it yes. <laughs> and if they don't like it then you're just short of that much and then you got to try again so you're investing the same amount again like it's yeah. it's a little trickier on the financial side but also I get really nervous because I personally am super particular and fussy on everything. I think it's part of having an artistic eye. So when I'm creating something, I, I, I do tap into what they want and what they need. I'll, I'll usually, well, the person has to have an idea what they want. I'm not one to create from blank. You have to tell me at least what technique. Do you want alcohol ink? Do you want resin? You know, and, and what colors because you want to match your space. Um, but everything else, like as far as what crystals go in there, that's all usually intuitive that I don't mind letting it flow. Cause I know my intuition is going to get it right. But as far as if you tell me the size and create something new, <laughs> I'll get way too nervous. You have to give me a little bit of details at least. <laughs> and the way that I actually found you was, I feel like it was at the Riverview holistic fair. Yeah. I was there the last two times that they were there. Yeah, and this was quite a while ago, but I bought mm -hmm. a, a ring from you. Ah, cool. And I feel like I bought some earrings too. And I just loved your stuff. And I'm like, oh my God, like, I don't know. It just inspired me. And then I wore my lapis. Awesome. It was a lapis lazuli ring. 
um, but it had like the resin in it. It was kind of round and it was my favorite ring for such a long time because it had the crystal in it and, yeah. but it was also so pretty aesthetically. And I'm like, and it had the turquoise and the, and the blues in it. And yeah. it just had so much meaning to me because it was like an art piece, but on your finger, it wasn't just like a lapis lazuli ring. It was like, it was art. And I'm Absolutely. like, this is so cool. <laughs> and another thing about putting crystals in the art that I learned when I was studying organite, because I make organ pieces as well. Mm -hmm. um, the resin, when it cures, it shrinks. Okay. And the pressure it puts on the actual crystal amplifies its energy and including its healing properties or whatever. So even if there's super tiny pieces, you know, when they say it's not the size that matters, well, sometimes it's true. <laughs> With crystals it is with crystals it absolutely is exactly <laughs> <laughs> that's funny um so when it comes to crystals like you said you intuitively connect to the crystal maybe less the person but more about the crystal um yeah. like so again with the channeling or that intuitive process how does that work for you just to help other people understand that maybe they're more intuitive than they realize or maybe they're more um in the process then they realize because yes, often we're doing absolutely. we're doing that 24 7 right our bodies are going places that they're meant to go absolutely. our hands are doing things that they're supposed to do like writing and stuff like that right so it's maybe just mm -hmm. teaching people like that process or that feeling or that emotion that you get in terms of like how you make choices well as far as the crystal first of all if you're right-handed choose with your left and vice versa um, because your right hand, like you said, it tends to be the writing one. It tends to be the brain hand okay. while your non-dominant hand will be your heart hand. Yeah. So if you work, so to speak, with the right, you will in be more intuitive with the left because it's less programmed and it's more free flow. Um, so I always choose with my left hand because I'm right-handed. And as far as what crystals to go for, I usually personally, because I have a sensitive hand because of healing therapies and such from my background, I just scan over my bottles and there's one that'll be hotter than another. And that's how I know. But for somebody who is new at it, if you're literally looking at a selection of crystals, whichever one captures your eye mm -hmm. is usually the right one. And if you hold it in your hand and it gets hot, you need that one right now <laughs> and and the thing about crystals is what you need today might not be what you need tonight or tomorrow or next week or next month so mm -hmm. it's it's one of those things you can't be necessarily wrong and there's no way of doing it of course you can muscle test um but generally speaking if you just close your eyes scan over the crystals with your non-dominant hand feel which ones you gravitate towards or look at them which one attracts you the most visually not necessarily visually but try to see with your heart not just your actual eyes in other words your third eye um and if you put it in your hand and it gets hot that's the one simple as that that's the one for today <laughs> Yeah, I like that you're saying that because I also worked at the market selling um, jewelry that I made yeah. and with crystals. And it was interesting, you're right, how people just like gravitate towards exactly what they need. But then I find, well, there are a couple of things where people would go towards like, I had a couple of things that weren't um, crystals, like mm -hmm. just like plain jewelry, but it was pretty. And I found a couple of people would go towards what was pretty that yeah. wasn't even like a crystal. And I'm thinking, no, like get away from the fake stuff and like go towards the good stuff. But they were- but like, sometimes it's just the color too, because yeah. color has a huge healing therapy aspect as well. Yeah. And I'm glad that you're saying that because they wouldn't have been on the table if I didn't feel that the, it was something that was attractive or something like that. But mm -hmm. it was just, I find like so many people need crystals. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like and they're not aware of how badly they need them because I started getting into crystals um because I wanted to um well like help people um mm -hmm. and I find that people think they're just like rocks like they're just like oh it's weird that you carry around a bag of rocks or it's weird that you have a rock <laughs> in your bra and all this stuff and I'm and that's why I love the woo -woo. <laughs> yeah that's why I love that you're putting it into your art 
because Absolutely. it's something that will be in people's houses and they're attracted to it, they, but they might not know why they're attracted to it. But everybody that's in that space is going to benefit. Absolutely. From it. And, and the thing is, they don't need to know. And right. that's why I kind of like to create non-commission, just create and then they choose what they want from what's finished. Because when I create, and I'm not having anyone in particular in mind, that's when I'm fully going with the flow. Mm -hmm. And when they choose a piece, whether it's for the visual aspect or the colors or the style, the crystals that are in there are calling them as well, whether they're aware of it or not. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I always write the name of the crystals that I use in the back of the piece along with my signature in the year so that the people that do care, because some of them don't care and that's fine. I, I don't care. <laughs> Yes. I love that you don't care. It, it does what it needs to do, whether you care or not. So I, I don't like, and some people say, well, why do you put crystals in it? Cause it's my thing. And that's all you need to know. <laughs> yeah. And I actually ended up that ring that I had that I loved. I ended up gifting it to a girlfriend of mine who lost her husband. Mm. Um, and she like had to take off her ring of course, because she just didn't want to continue to carry that energy. So it ended up getting passed along to somebody that also Aww. needed it. That so really my heart happy. Yeah. So <laughs> isn't it funny because you don't, this is what I've been noticing in my podcast is people don't really understand the impact that they have on people, but until you talk about it, right? So it's having conversations of like, hey, you really impacted me this way. And then you impacted somebody else. And then God knows she could have that ring could have gone on to another person. So it's, yeah. I don't know. I just feel like it's the gift that keeps on giving. And sometimes we're hard on ourselves and we don't realize the impact because we don't always see it. Right. As you were saying, the trusting factor. Of Absolutely. Like you're getting enough well, out of it. Once it goes out my door, I don't know what happens to it. I don't know if they're keeping it, gifting it, whatever. And and it's kind of part of the fun because I know like I have all these little babies that I created all over the place now and they're spreading. <laughs> yes. Like I've shipped stuff to the States and across Canada and I'm like, oh my God, like I call them my babies. They, they're, they're all over. They're multiplying and I love it. Like it's, it's, I like knowing that I'm leaving a little piece of what I create. It's not even a piece of me. It's a, it's a piece of what I was able to create all over. I love it for that. And I, I love hearing these. Oops, sorry, I whipped my tablet. Yeah. <laughs> and often people like won't take the time to maybe like take a picture of what they bought and then like share it mm -hmm. and like write that story because we're living busy lives. But I do think it's important. Maybe that's part of this conversation is to like let people know how you feel <laughs> and yes. share more stories, especially with, bus with business owners and artists or whoever like you have such a like you have such an impact on people but I just feel like it doesn't always get like the recognition that it deserves either unless people take the time to say like hey thank you for this or this really yeah. helped me with that and I think we just live in a kind of chaotic world right now where people oh, are my God. taking the time to give feedback or whatever it is but I just feel like you deserve I don't know, probably more than what you're getting. <laughs> like, and honestly, that's something that's been a big, big challenge in the last two years because of, you know, world problems, literally. Mm -hmm. um, because I used to go, like you met me at the holistic fair. So you yeah. see people's reaction. I sense them, whether they say something or not. And that, like, I've seen people look at something and have tears in their eyes. Like, you can't replace that. You can't even put words to that. But the last two years were nothing was in person anymore everybody's online like some people might like something they see they don't necessarily like comment do anything and even something they buy is like okay thank you for exchanging the love you know I give you my piece you give me something in return thank you for the love exchange but <laughs> I I don't even know most of the time like who this person is or what's going and and, and that's fine don't get me wrong mm -hmm. perfectly fine but I do miss like you say getting the feedback getting the oh I love this this is what it looks like I love it because or I gave this to this person because like I've had some moving stories and those make my day so much so often like little things right because for me yes it's a business but it's because it's a passion like and for me my whole theme 
it used to be art infused with intention, but most people didn't understand that. And I don't even have the right lingo for the new one yet, but it's, it's basically bringing peace into your home, like bringing peace into your space. That's, that's my goal. So if somebody tells me that they love what they have because, you know, whatever, like, major bonus I love hearing that it totally makes my day and it makes me want to make more (laughs) yeah Yeah, and that's hopefully that's inspiring other people to go out and just tell people like in comments and stuff like hey I really like your artwork instead of like worrying about what that you're commenting on something you know like just like share more comments about things that are positive because it could be the make or break of somebody's business potentially even like you might be at that kind of wits end some people right and just one person being like oh my god this is so beautiful and if you're maybe hard on yourself with your own artwork I don't know I just feel like we need more positivity spread (laughs) and I've had a good example of that this week where even if it's online, you never know who's watching. Yeah. You never know how big of an impact that something even so tiny can mean. Like my, my oldest is trans and May 17th, he got his first prescription for tea. And like, it was a big event for me. So I shared it and it happened to be on International Day Against Transphobia, Homophobia, Biphobia. And to me, that was like, wow, have the stars ever aligned that it lands on this day? Yeah. And so I shared it on my business page, which has nothing to do with my business <laughs> whatsoever but I'm all about being authentic and talk about your struggles and your you know your your wins and that for me was a huge win not even for me but for my kid but if my kid's happy I'm happy you know what I mean yeah anyways and and so I shared it in my stories and I did a quick post not even thinking much about it debating if I should even share that but he did give me permission don't get me wrong but so many people reached out I needed to hear that needed to see that you know what I mean? And it, it's it's about yeah. normalizing. And I find a lot of people have normalized venting. We need to normalize celebrating the wins, no matter how tiny they are. Like, hey, you made an awesome pancake. Good for you. Sure, some people are sick, <laughs> sick of seeing food on social media, but it's a positive. I tend to post a lot of nature pictures because <laughs> yeah. I'm a little bit obsessed. Yeah. And I think people must be so tired of seeing trees. But then I have, you know, Someone who reaches out like, wow, I couldn't go out today and I really need to see this. Thanks for sharing. Awesome. Like, you never know who's watching and yeah. who needs to see or hear or read something, you know? So, yeah, yeah, it's all about, like you said, go positive, share that stuff, like reach feedback, you know, because if, if they don't write, you don't know. <laughs> yeah, nowadays, and we, everybody's online. Yeah, and we live in kind of a stressed out world where a lot of people are using social media to de-stress but it can also add a lot of stress because we were talking about um, technology earlier and just how sometimes creative people and intuitive people might struggle a little bit more because essentially (laughs) essentially technology is a negative vibration right so like crystals 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 but I find like it can be a de-stressor for a lot of people just to get their mind off of things. So when they are scrolling and they see art or nature and stuff like that, or even like it could be pictures of crystals, like you can get the vibration from the picture, right? Absolutely. Um, So I find that's good. But then at the same time, I feel like we over, like, I feel like technology lowers our vibration as well so I oh, absolutely that definitely gets in the way of doing something more creative if it's like get off get off of your phone get off of your computer and go paint a picture go color or <laughs> doing something because we tend to just I feel like um we're not as innovative of like coming up with other activities maybe for some people mm-hmm. would you say mm-hmm like for me, I need to disconnect from time to time. Like I literally live in the middle of a forest and sometimes it's just a question of sitting on my deck for five minutes and just decompress and just listen to nature. Even if I'm not in it, if, even if I don't have the energy to go for a big walk or whatever, just sit and do nothing. People don't do that enough. Yeah. So what are ways that you could, um, like what are recommendations for people to like, to get more into a creative space because you were saying like it's good for you to have a sacred space which I also teach is a big is a big thing for me just with energy work as well in order to really um get into that mindset and feel that 
sense of grounding it's yeah. creating um creating the energy to walk into so it's already kind of like set up for yourself and of course nature but what are some other ways we can get into that creative space um like headspace well, really. there's there's a few obviously like you mentioned nature crystals like anything that raises your vibration or gets you excited that's inspiration and that inspiration when you hit that aha moment like oh i could do this write it down <laughs> if you can't do it right away mm-hmm. um and go back to it because often inspiration will hit when you least expect it <laughs> yep. and and uh, like i could be sitting on the jaw and looking at the pattern of my toes and say oh cool that i could do like that looks like that reminds me, oh and then you know trail of thought <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> write it down um and <laughs> another thing like if you have time to create and you don't know where to start whatever you feel comfortable with because comfort is a big thing so whatever you want to or feel comfortable with playing like in your case you got your blue markers in front of you but oh i just wrote the i just wrote the word teach down with my uh blue there you go I'm, there you go i so <laughs> the main thing that I always do when I step into the studio before I even turn on the music or anything is I just stop and take a few deep breaths and put my hands on my heart. In other words, allow the head to disconnect, which is where we live at most of our day, and connect with our heart because that's where guides will connect to that's where your intuition will come from it's not your head it's your heart and and that's where your real flow your flow will come from so just take a few deep breaths and allow everything else that's in your head to be released (sighs) and connect connect with your heart just like And for me, if I have a big day, I'll hold it in on the inhale for a few seconds. Like, try it now. You'll see the difference. Whether you just like, and then just hold it there. Mm-hmm. And it kind of forces you to really focus on your breath. Yeah. And then, and a lot of times, if that doesn't quite do it, I'll throw in a dance break. because I feel physically I carry a lot of stuff physically so if I'm cranking the tunes and just giving her like a little idiot it really (laughs) helps me have fun and let go whatever I'm holding on to physically (laughs) that's so funny and laugh not feeling inspired dance (laughs) and laughter obviously you like to laugh as well um my aunt right now is about to go through some cancer treatments Um, So I'm going to visit her tomorrow for the weekend and um, she's bringing another uh, friend down, like kind of family member, because she always makes her laugh. And she's like, I want her to come to visit me because I always laugh when I'm with her and more more lighthearted. And so like you were saying, you're more selective with who you spend your time with. It sounds like because you like things to be more medicinal, like you're like, I want my people to be my medicine, like not people who like I can listen to and get energy off of and then like even take that into my artwork, like their stories or their maybe their sadness if it's someone who you care about, like I feel like you're really emotional too. Yeah. So I feel like oh yeah feed off what, <laughs> so good like, and bad. <laughs> yeah so I mean it makes sense why you might be more selective that way um yeah. but like have you you said you were in a toxic relationship I believe you said it was toxic but it yeah. wasn't healthy um so yeah. like what was that like for your creative process when you were in an unhealthy situation I did not create <laughs> <laughs> right. And I, it's so this is a there perfect- was very little flow. I did create a little bit um, because I have to. Um, it was my 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 um, my happy place as usual. But um, and I, I, I don't like to speak negative about that relationship too much because there was a lot of good that came out of it, obviously, of including, my, including my two children. So yep. um, but for me, like the person himself isn't necessarily toxic per se but his way of life and seeing things and my way of life of seeing things for me it was toxic right I just want to I just want to clarify that not to bash anyone no I love I love that you're saying that like because that's all that's all energy too like how to indicate 
when something's right and when something's wrong, right? Like yeah, it, it was wrong for me. <laughs> right, and creativity isn't just like art, and a lot of people think that it is. Creativity to me is problem solving, right? It's oh, yeah. a process, it's a process of um, connection, like you said, that mindfulness practice, the energy of flow going through you, whether it's through listening, seeing. You mentioned the third eye, uh, a feeling that we get in our in our stomach, or it's the process of, of energy, right? And then yeah. it's what we do with it. It's how we like it's not just the process but it's then it's the um the reaction the release yeah. the- and how long you can hold on to it too because i know for me like when i have an energetic high because i do get those i'm sure you know what i'm talking about when everything's like wow and you're feeling great and and things are like wow you know i call that a, an energetic high yeah i sometimes crash after <laughs> Like it's, it's how you maintain that and how you treat it afterwards. You know, do you really take the time to appreciate it and tap into that emotion so you can reconnect and recreate it later? Or do you just take it for, you know, face value and then tuck it away, which is fine as well. But it's all about how you can sustain that what you need. And I'm the type of person, you mentioned it a few times. I'm very emotional. I'm very sensitive, fully aware. It's a gift and a curse. <laughs> depending where I'm at and with who and for how long and how many people oh my god I don't do many people very well um but it's 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 all about how you can maintain what you need and that's different for everybody so it's all about just getting to know yourself and getting to know what makes you vibrate what makes you happy Mm -hmm. and how you can sustain and tap back into those when you need it because we all have downs we all have downs in the last two years I think everybody's taxed tapped into their max down (laughs) Yeah, I'm getting the word re- recharge. How do you Absolutely. all the because we're in Mercury retrograde right now, so it's like oh, probably why we're I'm playing with all the re words, but yeah. it, it's like rewarding yourself, recharging your energy because when you feel good, yeah. like life just you mentioned the word flow, like life just flows, and yeah. if you're not in the right circumstances with the right people and things like that, it's not hard to tell. Like hey, I'm blocked in my solar plexus I don't feel like I can breathe I have anxiety like those simple that simple technique of putting my hand on my heart is impossible right now like that's Mm -hmm. an indication like you need to recharge and and re-energize whether it's through nature or crystals or being around people that make you happy (laughs) but like absolutely you might need to add the ground to that list because a lot of people don't know how to ground and for me that's huge because I can rest and recharge all I want if I haven't released what's not mine or released what's too heavy for me to carry I can rest and recharge as much as I want I am still exhausted yeah so are you saying like you mean just changing the circumstances type of thing um if need be but even just grounding like like just releasing what's in excess like and and it might be different for everybody but personally when I do feel you know when something's off or whatever I tend to pick it up Mm-hmm. And a lot of times I say pick it up because a lot of times it's not mine, which is why public places with a lot of people is hard on me psychologically and energetically because I, I pick up what's on mine. Now, don't get me wrong. I do at this point in my life know how to protect myself properly. I'm mentioning it because a lot of people don't. Right. They walk in and walk out without any mind of what's happening to you energetically. Um, but if I'm carrying something that's heavy and even a lot of times it is mine. If I've lived something that, you know, hurt or was heavy or was really emotional or, and I don't mean in a good way, like I need to release that. I need to ground literally. And there's a bunch of ways you can do so. But if, if I don't release it, I can sit in nature and meditate and dance as much as I want. Well, dance is one of the reasons that I actually do ground, but if you don't let it go, it's not really gone. <laughs> yeah so I mean? yeah like so the more of that like so that's where the creativity comes in to hand because if you like to do art or if you like to um, write or journal or whatever it is then like that's a simple tool to release what you're experiencing and also kind of like problem solve through it right like if you mm-hmm then you can reflect back on like what you wrote if you want to, or you can just burn it. 
but regardless, like I find for me, I'm a big reflector. Um, I'm really into reflection to the point where it used to be a negative because I would overanalyze, but, (laughs) but now I really, now that I realize it's just like, I'm really into the layers. I'm like, okay, there's this. And then there's something under that. And then there's something underneath that. And I find it fascinating that there are so many layers to people and like trees. And there's just so much that we can learn in this life. It feels like there isn't, for me, sometimes I feel like there isn't enough time for all the passions and interests that I have. Yeah. But after this now, I'm like, I need to like reprioritize my desires, my passions, because, um, I used to spend a lot of time focusing on everybody else. Oh yeah. (laughs) And like, even just thinking about customizing things for people and like, I make products as well. I can get really caught up in, like, I love the process of doing the things, but when it comes to the other stuff, like the orders, and now I have to do all of like these things. I'm realizing that it's like hiring people to do the like I can be the creator and the creative person and then I can hire somebody else to do like all the things that take away my joy (laughs) yeah I can't wait to be at a financial place that I can do that as well (laughs) yeah and so maybe that's something you could put on your vision board or like what the next new moon create um but I've known for a long time what I love and like being creative is what I love to do, like self-expression and I'm doing it right now on the podcast, but it's also like, I feel like sometimes we have that big to-do list and all the things we want to learn, but then we don't, as you said, with self-love, we don't always put like the things that we want first that we, we might think, oh, like painting's just for like people that have time to waste. Yeah. And And I think, I think, you know, doing things for you like for yourself I think is something that society has deemed as selfish and they've seen selfish in a negative aspect Mm -hmm. I think doing something for you if you are selfish means you're doing something you you know you're putting up your boundaries you're respecting your boundaries you're doing something for yourself I think that's an absolute positive like the word selfish to me used to have a negative intonation. And now I see it as so positive. It means you can stand up for yourself because nobody else is going to do it for you. Yeah. Because being selfless gets all the, you know, it, like people are like, oh, be selfless, be kind. And, all and there's, a, there, there's room for that too. Right. But, but I also it's think it's also fit- perfectly fine to be selfish. <laughs> but I also think the time. <laughs> they're equally they're equally equal. Like they're both a hundred percent. And yeah, we sometimes have negative going back into limiting beliefs, like negative, um, associations with what selfishness is. So maybe we should do a couple clearings around selfishness. Absolutely. (laughs) Um, Or switch it around to be selfless towards yourself. (laughs) Yeah. Good one. Um, so Sarah mentioned in the comments talking about positive feedback I love this podcast great job ladies awesome awesome thank you Sarah (laughs) yeah Sarah's really great for sharing out stuff too I really appreciate her um so let's just ground whatever that means for you and maybe it's putting your hand back up to your heart and doing that breath work And for anyone that's watching that doesn't currently do any grounding or they don't focus on breathing or recentering, maybe this is a practice moving forward you'll start doing on a daily basis. And also what I'm kind of getting is like around food too. Sometimes we have, we get weird about the choices that we make with food because people tend to gain weight and there's a lot of negative energy with that. But I kind of feel like people can do the same thing with the crystals with like using their opposite hand to like go in the grocery store and like feel into like the vibration of the vegetables. Like maybe they have lots of pesticides or like maybe there's something else that could be a little fresher that you could be buying. Like just getting familiar with the idea of like what you're putting into your hands or like what you need. And also we can use our body as a pendulum as well. So when we want a yes, is this a good, is this good for me? You can lean forward as a yes or back for a no, just learning how to 
like connect to the physical body as a pendulum as well. So now that you guys are, are in that state, would you like to let go of any past pain or hurt that is no longer serving you? And let's replace that with cherishing every single moment in your life. So if that means celebrating really small things or just becoming more aware to what your circumstances are, or maybe just connecting a little bit more into the heart space. Would you like to open up your energy to all of those things? And if so, just say yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and like, if I go into you, Melissa, I get your sh the energy around your shoulders. Yeah, I carry a lot there. <laughs> and also... <laughs> And also, um, like when we're doing a lot of the same repetitive movements too, like you probably, mm -hmm. when you're working, probably are like leaning over. Yeah, the last few days in particular, it flared up. So that's right. probably I'm thinking about. <laughs> so if everybody wants to even just lift their shoulders, you know how you can bring your shoulders all the way up to your ears and then just hold it there for a sec and then just drop, drop the shoulders. Like the whole weight of the world is just dropping. And just little techniques that feel really important. So just doing it again. And you maybe you want to roll your shoulders, opening up your heart, whatever it is. But I feel like a lot of people don't realize how important it is to like take care of their bodies. Just like getting massages and like stretching and just stuff like that. Because I feel like that's another release technique too. It's just like um moving energy through the body too, right? We Absolutely. Don't so I don't know that's just coming up as well and often when we have stuff in our shoulders that can be related to just general stress where you said that you're quite sensitive um so how do you feel when you go on social media like where there's so many energies there um honestly I'm really selective there too yeah. <laughs> yep um, I only follow people that I literally want to either keep in touch with or like what they post. Um, I'm very easy to unfriend or just simply, look, you know, change the notification. So I don't necessarily unfriend them, but don't see their stuff if it doesn't make me feel good. Good. So that's, um, that's helpful for other people that are listening to that might be something oh, that they absolutely especially during chaotic times I really had to filter my stuff because I did want to connect with people online was the only time to do so for a long time so I was really selective like I I, I, I did a clean up <laughs> good yes and good. I don't even I don't even have like my family or like my brother-in-laws or people on my on my Facebook and I think a lot of people I feel like some people have taken offense to like me removing them, <laughs> but I use my social media for positive, like things Absolutely. like this. And that's just so like in my personal life then I have my people and they know my phone number. And like, that's kind of how I, yeah. how I separate. So do you yeah. have a, do you have a hard time sometimes separating business from personal or does it all like lump in? Uh, it all kind of intertwines to be honest. Like like for Instagram, for example, I don't even have a personal account. So my business account is my everything. And like just this week, I asked, like, do you guys want to see more personal stuff or do you want to keep it more, you know, just art? Everybody voted personal. So they don't mind. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So yeah. It, it seems like you're kind of an open book, which is part of your I free am. spirit. I literally but... am. Because I mean, nowadays, what people see as perfection is absolutely ridiculously unrealistic. Um, so I'm all about keeping it real, um, from A to Z, whether it's what is going on physically, mentally, artistically, obviously I like to post that stuff, but I'm also real about the other stuff, you know? So it's whatever. I'll often whip out my phone and on social media. When you have a business, you kind of have to anyways, yep. <laughs> I have a bit of a love hate relationship with that. Cause I'm like, right. Oh crap. I haven't posted in four days. Gotta do something. <laughs> yeah. Cause you said you're not really techie, right? No, I'm not techie. It doesn't come out naturally. But honestly, like creating the videos and stuff, I enjoy that. My sister laughed at me because I did a presentation at the school and I did like a 20 minute video with sound effects and stuff. And she's like, Mel, you put in more effort than most teachers do. 
<laughs> like I, I have fun with it if I have time but that thing took me a whole day <laughs> so right but you it sounds like when you love a project like you give yeah. it your all and if you don't love the project you might not even do it I'm an all or nothing kind of girl for yeah everything yeah I, I, I'm learning to be more that way like just to like say no to, to projects that I don't really want to be doing as I was saying yes, it's hiring yes. hiring the person that can do the things that take my energy away yes because but running, saying no is a huge lesson it's hard to set those boundaries because I, 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 I feel bad for the people asking if I have to say no but I'm at a point where if I don't say no and do something I don't really want to or feel called to or you know it, it, mm -hmm. it is like yeah I could I say no because if I do create it it's not going to be my best work and it's not going to be the best thing for them and sometimes it's like ask me again in two months because it's something that I could do but right. the timing doesn't feel right you know yeah so and sometimes sometimes it's a plain old no sorry I don't do that or I can't right now or whatever like I've, I've learned to say no and honestly that's been a huge help <laughs> Yeah. And that's part of being an intuitive as well. I find like that can kind of come with, I don't want to say disappointing people, but like there comes a time where if you want to continue to be an intuitive or be a mm -hmm. creative person, like you kind of have to get used to like disappointing other people because it's like when you're on a mission to follow that path, like mm -hmm. nobody is going to stop you because you know how you feel energy wise if you do go off the path. So it's like not worth it. Yeah. So I find if you're, if you're listening and that's happening to you, where you feel like people are throwing you off your path or you're doing all these things that you don't really want to be doing, maybe it's time to really, yeah, set boundaries or like learn to ground more. Um, but a big, a big thing is just listening and trusting yourself, I find, because it's yeah. so easy to let that ego get in the way and like yeah and judge and so if that's been the hardest thing for me is distinguishing what's coming from the head and what's coming from the heart yes because I am good now but that feels like it took me forever to figure <laughs> out that like these <laughs> negative thoughts are just negative thoughts and they don't control you and like that judgment's not true so if it is say I'm like creating an art piece or something because I just started doing intuitive painting for like the moons and stuff and I just started mm -hmm. adding crystals into it um, awesome. I'm doing it just for me. So I don't have any judgment with it. Um, so I'm continuing to stay in that process of just doing things for myself and then seeing how it helps other people when I go to do like the full moon ritual or something. So I'm like easing my way with that yeah. um, because I find if I started to think that it was going to somebody else, I would let that probably start to let that ego slip in. <laughs> yes, that's why I have a love hate relationship with commissions because as much as I need the work or you know appreciate the orders, I get right nervous. <laughs> yeah, practice. And, and if I'm just creating to create, that nervousness is taken out of the equation. You know. Yeah. So if we're doing it for ourselves and other people can benefit by sharing. What, absolutely what you have that's why I think we have gifts our gifts are meant mm -hmm. to be shared so if you have these like secret um, gifts or talents whether you're a singer or a songwriter whatever it is I know some there are certain um, industries that are really tough because they're because everybody has these creative talents but it's like to just learn to worry less about what other people think <laughs> and just do yeah. it and just do it anyway as you said just start and like let it flow and stop kind of I find procrastination and creativity go hand in hand <laughs> <laughs> do you find oh. you still there yeah oh I thought I lost you for their second mercury um, retrograde that was that yeah um my brain keeps coming back to a visual you mentioned the path <laughs> And, mm -hmm. and when yeah. it keeps repeating, it has to come out. Yeah. Um, so basically, uh, of course, I'm visual. I saw the path. And when you say when you're on that path, you have to choose. And it was a clear message of choose what you make your path with. It can be deep mud. It can be rocks. It can be pave. And basically, the more you follow your instinct, learn to say no, learn to do what feels right, everything else, you're going on the more paved pattern you know and we're always walking the path no matter which direction it takes or no matter what we're walking on 
but you get to choose and create because we're the own masters of our creations, which includes our path. You get to create how easy it is to walk on. I like that. And at what pace you can follow. If you're walking in deep mud in something that doesn't feel right, yeah, you're still technically moving forward, but snail pace. <laughs> if you if you do what feels right, and if you're following your instinct, well, you're adding a little crush down. And eventually, if everything's coasting super fast and you're on an incredible momentum, well, you've got a paved road, honey. Enjoy the flight. <laughs> you know, so it, yeah. it's it's one of those things you you need to choose what you're putting on your path. I like that. And I think it's about that learning, the learning process, right? Like it's, that's part of the creative process is the learning process is that we never stop learning or growing and, and like, we'll have this, even if you believe that we're here just for this, like one lifetime, it's, it's like the energy, your spirit moves on. Right. And so you're like, the flow will never stop. So it's like, you can, continue to let it go as you already said like find ways to let it go or you can hang on to it but like how is it serving you right like just continuing to like do the breathing and um yeah just I feel like just to continue to let it out too whatever that means for people so Mm -hmm. let's let's clean up just that last little bit would you like to let go of any tension that you might be feeling in your physical body oh yes well (laughs) Let's replace that with feeling more free, feeling more light in your body so that when you go to do your projects, you feel even happier. (laughs) (laughs) And if so, just say yes. Yes. And the visualization I'm getting is like a teeter-totter, right? Sometimes we're down, sometimes we're up. And it's just yeah. always kind of like balancing that um, yin and yang type of thing, like the right and the left side of the brain, which it feels like you're really great at. Like, it feels like you have a really good balance with like staying in your heart space, which is mm-hmm. fabulous. So would you like to know that you're doing a great job with balancing your left and your right side of your brain and essentially like your life? <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. And <laughs> would you like to know what it looks like and feels like to vibrate that balance in your physical body as well so that your yes. everything in your body starts functioning at its highest capacity. Yes. And just a recommendation would be and for anyone that's listening to when it comes to like time to do things that you lose track of time. And that's an indication that you're on the right like path too. Like, because when you're looking at the clock or time's moving slow, it just feels like that's like a, that there's like a sign there type of thing. Like it's Mm -hmm. because we don't really want to live our life around time. But, so, but that's an intuitive practice too, is to like, imagine if we didn't have clocks, we would actually have to feel what time it is. We would have to look at the stars, right? We would have to learn. So do you, do you find that you, like, are you, do you have a busy life? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> right. So that might be something to, it might be like looking at the stars more or something mm-hmm. like that like I do that all the time my honey laughs at me I'll go out at night before bed yeah. in, in, in not much ready for sleep and no matter how cold it is I will literally like I have a patio door and Good. I live in a pretty uh secluded place so there's all kinds of stars if this and yeah. I will literally just open the door peek my head out even if it's freezing and just look up or look out you know <laughs> keep doing that um and yeah. do you do any type of work with the stars like no. galaxies or something like that I don't know no. I feel like I could see you creating something related to like stars possibly if don't ask like, you to name them though <laughs> but if if you like the stars oh I do that might be something like you could do like a sky because you tend to do a lot of ocean don't you I do yeah I do because the ocean I, I I don't think I've met very many people where the ocean doesn't bring you joy and relaxation. Yes, it's beautiful. So I tend to incorporate a lot of that. Plus, 
creating the buildup of the sand base bottom allows me to have something I can plot my crystals in kind of like beach glass except it's not hmm. <laughs> so so I do tend to do a lot of beaches um and funny enough I don't like to swim in the ocean I get a rash but I love to listen <laughs> to it and to sit in the sand and ground like just just last weekend I had my feet in the sand like it's so grounding it's so calming and that's when, you know, like you say, you lose track of time because you're in your flow. You know, you're in the right place in the right time yeah. if you lose track of it. Yeah. Well, I hope this was helpful for people listening as well. And I'm just going to integrate all that energy. So everything people want to let go of and bring into their life, I'm just going to integrate that. We're going to give you a general overall healing for your health and your physical bodies as well. We all need it right now. Good. And I'm getting gratitude as well. That's coming up. Um, that's really been a big part of my journey lately is just like always bringing everything back into gratitude, which I feel like you have a really great grasp on as well. Oh so, yeah. Gratitude is my way of life. <laughs> yeah. So I really appreciate you coming on as well. And uh, hopefully I'll be buying a big piece for my new house when I build it. <laughs> You're welcome. I wish that for both of us, honey. <laughs> and I'll just think a little differently when I look at it now. So thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Have an awesome day. You too. Okay, bye. Bye-bye.